All right, it's time for the lunch rush. All right, so the lunch rush, how's it going? It's great. Good to have you on board. Man, you're we've, a good looking uh, kid. We've been teasing this for the better part of an hour. So, Pro Football Focus <laughs> put out there uh, 32 starters ranked, quarterback rankings, quarterback tiers. Let's go through these. Uh, they believe in the Yurko philosophy. Tier one is Patrick Mahomes and Thank Patrick you. Mahomes only. That's it. Nobody else belongs up there. You're welcome. Tier two Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, and Josh Allen mm. in that order. Is Lamar Jackson better than Joe Burrow? Um, I, I don't know if he is, but to say you shuffled the deck and you, you threw either one of the three anyway, if you put him five, does he belong in tier two? I believe he does belong in tier two of quarterbacks. I think they're missing one, but I think they are. Um, I think that, that he is a tier two quarterback. Ooh. I want Herbert there. I don't know why I'm Herbert's not say, there. Is... Tier two is labeled the elite. So they consider those three elites outside of obviously the elitist no. is Patrick yeah. Mahomes. The There's most one elite. elite and the rest are in categories below them. So the category below that is postseason caliber quarterbacks. Justin Herbert, Dak Prescott, Matthew Stafford, Aaron Rodgers, Jalen Hurts, and C.J. Stroud. Okay, so yeah, I, I I don't mind that. I thought Jalen Hurts took a back step last year, yes, so that's indeed. fine with me. I, yes. That's fine with me. If you, you you knocked him down a few notches, that's fine. Is it is it too early to judge C.J. Stroud after one year? It was pretty impressive one year, though. Was it too early to judge uh, Dan Marino? I don't think so. Um, I think he achieved well, at a great level. I think he outdid his expectations. Whatever the expectations were for C.J. Stroud, he outdid him. And remember, he did it in 15 games. Okay, but He then, didn't have a full 17-game slate. All right, but Aaron Rodgers had no games last year. Yeah. Then he should be higher up. He should be in Tier 2 just based on his reputation and his past experience. He should be one of the elite quarterbacks. You would you would guess that he, he would be up there. Yeah, so yeah, I don't he, think that Aaron should Rodgers be should two. be in Tier 3. Yeah, he should probably be a Tier 2 quarterback. All right. I would the agree. next tier, tier four, the melting pot of starters: Jordan Love, Trevor Lawrence, Brock Purdy, Tua Tagovailoa, Kirk Cousins, Jared Goff, Kyler Murray, Geno Smith, and the highest-ranked rookie quarterback, Caleb Williams. Wow. At 19. Now, tier Justin, three? Justin Fields never made it above, I think, 23. At one point, he was. So, Caleb Williams already being ranked 19th, according to Pro Football Focus. This year's your mishmash of quarterbacks in the wild card, usually. Right? This is your mishmash. Was Purdy in this group? Yes. Yes, he was. Yeah, so Purdy's probably the guy that's got the... that's played some of the best football in this group. This is a wide-ranging group. Like, taking all the ingredients from meals that you made in the first three days and putting them together in, like, some sort of medley, you know? All right, we're just going to take these quarterbacks. We've got varying opinions of all these guys, and we'll put a rookie in there, and we'll put them in a pot, and we'll make something out of it. That's kind of what this feels like, and it's a, an extensive list of quarterback waiting for somebody to take that next step. Veteran guys that could take that next step, um, uh, guys that have been in the league for four years, and a rookie that, okay, who's going to get ready to vault themselves into the top ten? Well, two quarterbacks that I'm surprised that are in on this, in this tier. Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy and Jared Goff. Jared Goff, that's what I was going to say. Jared suggest. Goff like, should be in the playoff group, along with Stafford and Jalen and C.J. Stroud. Right. Like, they went to an NFC Championship game. Both those quarterbacks went to the NFC Championship that's game last year. That's a great point. If you're, if you're judging C.J. Stroud on last year, then you should also be judging Jared Goff on last year. And I'll tell you, the money for these guys at being, if Justin Herbert is only in Tier 3, Damn, they're making He's some. Tier, yeah, tier three. That's tier right. Tier three. Yeah. They're the making guys, some nice coin then. Nothing wrong with that. Wow. Uh, rounding out the uh, tiers here, this tier five can single handedly win and lose you games. Baker Mayfield, Derek Carr, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson. And then they didn't put uh, Caleb Williams in the quote next generation tier. That includes Anthony Richardson, Bryce Young, Jacoby Brissett, or Drake May, whoever ends up starting there. Yeah. Uh, Jaden Daniels, Will Levis, and then the holdovers tier, tier seven, is Daniel Jones, Aiden O'Connell, or Gardner Minshew, whoever ends up starting there. Sam Darnold or J.J. McCarthy, and then, uh, or sorry, Sam Darnold and J.J. McCarthy or Jared Stidham and Bo Nix. So yeah, those that's are, fair. Yeah, that's how it rounds out. Wow. 
Be wary of McCarthy. That's all I'm going to tell people. Be wary. Yeah. Be wary of McCarthy. We'll, we'll find out by November when the Bears start division play whether they will be facing Sam Darnold or J.J. McCarthy. Well, and that's well into the season, so that's we'll, I mean. we'll find out. You're 100% correct. You might find out before that. You might find out by week one. McCarthy might come over there and just rest the position from him, period. Wow. Say, here we go. We stick with Pro Football Focus for our next story. They uh, went through each team and named the three best players on every single team. Who do you think the Bears' three best players are? Sweat. Yep. Um, Jalen Johnson. Correct. And DJ Moore. That is correct. Wow. So three for three. Honorable mentions to Caleb Williams, Keenan Allen, and TJ Edwards. Okay. Oh, wow. Yep. Wow. And TJ Edwards making a lot less than the guy that's uh, over there, Edmonds. Oh, yeah. Well, I always said Edmonds, if he doesn't pick up his game, will be a cap casualty at some point. Oof. He will be. He needs he needs to make you, you more need... game-changing plays. Yes. And I think he had an interception last year. Yeah. That's the kind of things he needs to do. Well, and that's, what they, that's how they hyped him with his wingspan, yep. that he is going to be a game-changer. Well, we'll see. But really, it took a while for him to really start picking it up becoming acclimated to what the chicago bears are trying to do and edwards was the guy that was doing all the yeoman's work oh yes he was yeah, yeah. oh that's good i like that yeah that's not bad uh, ours was easy the bears i think yeah. was easy yeah. yeah i think so too uh some other nfl stories we talked about this uh, a little earlier in the off season when the nfl was kind of testing this in some stadiums around the nfl last year but now Every stadium in the NFL in the preseason is going to be testing this line to gain optimal tracking optical, sorry, optical tracking system. Uh, and if it works out in the preseason, you know, figuring out where the first down marker is and then the goal line and all that kind of stuff. If it works in the preseason, according to Jonathan Jones of CBS, it could receive full implementation as soon as this NFL season. So tennis has the Hawkeye technology for line calls. Soccer has the tracking mechanism for offsides. Uh, is it time? And they got goal line technology also. They do. Right. So is it time for the NFL to just get with the times and have these types of mechanisms? I think tennis. To take the human error out of it? The tennis system is exceptional. The goal line technology is exceptional for soccer. The offside stuff is garbage. The offsides is garbage. Garbage. It's no good. It, it, it takes away from the play. I think um, they try to be so minuscule and try to make calls on things that are so tiny that it's beyond the point of being ridiculous. So when it's one item against another item, so like a foot at a line marker, that the technology, I understand that. But Chris Black brought up something in our, our pre-show meeting that when you have a pile up how how could you ever use the technology when there are mass piles of men laying there at the line well what's Unless the, what's the technology technism- what's the technology in the football what, what are they going to explain how it, are they going to explain is it, it on the lines well i'm saying the, the football when when the knee goes down you have to have technology in the football to tell you where the first point of the football is and you're not carrying the football the same way, and the same point is not always pointed in the same direction. Well, is it or is it optical? If yeah. it's not, if there's not something implanted inside the football, then it would almost be like just looking at an optical line that tells you. Are these? I don't know. Right? It just doesn't. I don't see a dedication to the cameras that are going to be necessary to make that thing happen. Uh, they're going to try it out. So let's see what it looks like. Well, this is what I love when you and I watch the games. Yeah. The ball placement oh, drives you crazy. They're, they're terrible. It does drive you crazy. I have not, and I'm not, I don't know what the individual's names are that are the uh, line judges in the NFL. Right. I used to think Dale Hammer was the worst. He was a line judge before Dale Hammer ended up going to be a referee for a while before he, in disgrace, returned back to being a line judge. Um, he was horrific at it. And... Uh, They've set new boundaries of how horrific marking the football can be in the current state. So maybe it'll help, but I think it's going to be impossible. We'll see in the preseason. Maybe it's not. And that's the lunch rush. 
Love it. That was good. That was fun. Um, now I'm a little worried because we have McKnight at the movies coming up. You shouldn't be. I think you're going to do fine. I don't like being put you on the spot be. with remembering movies. You and Sylvie. It's Sylvie doesn't really, like trivia. Trivia. You don't like movie stuff. I, I like movies, but I don't have the same mental capacity and the memory capacity that you guys do. You'll find out. That's what you're going to do. We're going to throw you your feet to the fire, and you're either going to respond or you're going to fail miserably. Now, I, I get, I've only won once this year. It's the fifth month of the year. I've only won once. Carmen usually wins every single week. So I'm How's not he, great like, at this either. So you're not going to uh, you're not going against the the creme de la creme of this this situation. So you've got a chance. Carmen, trying to build you up a little. Carmen's going to call in. He's going to call in for McKnight at the movies because we have that coming up next.